What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode, Master Modes Film Session, and I'm excited because today, we get to talk about the Gunslinger. Yes, indeed. Number seven, Ben Roethlisberger. Obviously, since he signed his extension last week, it's been a divide, right? Some people think that he's still capable of doing the things that he needs to do for this team to win. Others think that, you know, his time has passed. He doesn't have the same arm strength. It's not as lively as it needs to be. Well, today we are going to highlight some of the things that support why he can still get the job done. So we're going to bounce around a little bit, but as we always do, baby, hold on to your hat. But if you haven't done so just yet, make sure you're subscribing. If you're not subscribing, what are you doing, baby? What exactly are you doing? <laughs> but first, we got to start with um, this play um, against the Colts right here it was the 34 yard pass to Chase Claypool. So, you know, we do this, we'll play it in full speed, and then after that, we'll break it down. Obviously, that's your man Chase. And then we already know where the quarterback is, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All righty. All righty. So, just from a pre snap standpoint, as we let this thing play out a little bit, they initially give you. A little bit of a too high shell, but you see the safety walking down. So that's giving you the indication that this could be three or one, right? One of those single high looks. And Ben knows that. And with him knowing that, you'll see pre-snap him starting to communicate with Chase Claypool, right? See him pointing out there to him right now, looking both ways. But he knows right now, hey, I got the look that I want. I have the single high look. And the biggest issue is going to be this. How do you hold this safety? while still allowing uh, Chase to run this skinny post and you hit it right in this area right here between the numbers and the hash, right? That's what you're trying to get. But like I said, this safety is still there. So Ben, understanding that, he's holding the safety. This is the veteran savviness that Ben is going to bring you just being the quarterback, right? We said it doesn't matter about young guys. This guy still can, you know, just beat you from above the neck. And that's what he's doing right here. He knows he wants this pass right here to Claypool. But like I said, he sees this. So what does he do? He eyes down Ebron, which makes this safety have to react there, which in turn opens up that window where we're trying to get, right? We said we wanted that ball to get right in here, right? Between the numbers and the hash. Well, now we got that, okay? We got that because of him using his eyes to move this safety right here. Safety bites. Now he has that space needed. Arm strength right there, accuracy right there, puts it right where it needs to be. Catches the in stride, beautiful throw and catch right there. It's high quality play. And like I said, man, when you see type, when you see those type of things, you know he's capable of doing this. Now the big thing from my perspective is reducing the amount of attempts. He is very fine from an arm standpoint. He has the accuracy, the touch, the strength. But when you're asking him to throw that ball 40, 50, sometimes 60 times, way too much, way too much. But this is all above the neck right here. Look at that. Moving to safety with his eyes, man. High level play right here. Know you want to get that skinny post, but I got to move this safety. Eyes. He hasn't looked over there to Claypool once, even though he knows he's going there. Now we're coming. And he lets off a rocket right here. Beautiful. I mean, that's high-level quarterback play. So, I definitely like that right there. And like I said, man, it was a couple of things in this game that he did just like that. But really just showing he can still do these things. For all the doubters out there, seven still is the guy. Let's go. All right, now this next play we're going to talk about, once again, shows Ben doing what he does, right? Using that arm strength, showing the touch and the accuracy as well, and just his above the net game. So this is the 39-yard uh, touchdown pass that he threw to Deontay Johnson, also in that Colts game, and right here is Deontay. So what we'll do, like we always do, play it in full speed, and after that, I'll break it down. Now, once again, why do I like this throw? Why am I adding this 
as we're talking about Ben because the questions are always about the arm strength. So we know we're 40 yards out here. But a couple of things that happened on this play that, you know, I really just like about this. So when you're looking at seven, he knows right now what this coverage is. This is six all day, every day. You got your, uh, you got your squat corner on the back right here. So that means this guy has that half. He's right here. That's the vertical guy right there, okay? That's all they're running. So, if you're seven, you know, okay, if I'm trying to hit this sluggo, because that's what uh, Deontay's running with a sluggo, all it is is just a slant, and he's just going off of it, all right? So, he fakes the slant and then breaks out of it to go for a vertical route. But knowing that, he knows that he has to make sure this guy isn't a player. So, how does he do that? He controls him with his eyes. He controls him with his helmet the whole time, and that keeps this guy here so he can't give a little bit of late hope and then for there watch where this ball is placed at the end i mean it's a perfectly thrown ball 40 yards deep hits the receiver on a dime i mean and you could just see the difference of that throw though compared to the one that we just watched in the previous video where it was a little bit more on a rope a lot tighter of a spiral this one higher arc and a lot more touch but once again just showing that he is still capable of doing these things Biggest thing, like I said, though, you got to cut down the attempts. Cut down the attempts. I think that this arm that he has, the new arm, the robo arm, can still be really, really good. But like I said, you can't have him doing this 40, 50 times in a game. That's not where he's at right now. But as a whole, still doing some very, some, some very you know, nice things from the quarterback position. Once again, pre-snap communication, but watch his eyes. He's not even looking over there. Why? <laughs> Because he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows where he's going with this ball. And he's trusting his arm right here. At this point in his game, also, he had warmed up. He had got hot by now. And you can see the confidence that he was playing with. But right here, man, it's just above the net game. Keeping that safety that we just pointed out in the uh, from the wide copy. Keeping the middle of the field so he looks center and over here. And now you get the matchup you want. That true one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline. And this is beautiful right here, man. So that thing roll out. Beautiful, though, man. Work the safety. Touch on this ball. Put it only where Deontay can get it, man. Very much still capable. Very much still capable. But like I said, man, it's going to be important that they do things to help his situation, right? What do we mean by that? You got to get the offensive line improved. He needs more protection. If the reason why he was throwing these two to three, you know, yard passes at a crazy, uh, you know, time, I think it was, what, under two seconds he was releasing the ball, if that was solely because of the offensive line, then they have to improve that element of it so he can go back to doing some of these things. When he stretches the field like this, the offense becomes so much more dynamic. I think it's going to open up the run game a lot more as well. But like I said, got to get the first things first. Take care of the protection. Give my man some time. All right, now this next play that we're going to discuss is um obviously from the wild card round against the uh, Cleveland Browns, a game where... It was mixed reviews about Ben. Obviously, statistically, from one angle, you could say, hey, man, you performed pretty well. But then for the other side of it, the turnovers, and then obviously the first half, we're like, man, I don't want to hear about any of that stuff. But I wanted to highlight a couple of plays that he had in this game that, to me, just reiterates the fact that he's going to be fine as long as you put him in the right situation next year. Prime example is this one right here, man. <laughs> But what we'll do is this, man. This is the, um, I think it was a 20-yard pass to James Washington on the right side. So we'll play it in full speed. After that, we'll break it down. And like I said, this is James Washington. He was on the right side. So here we go. Okay, okay. Start that off. Oh, before I start the break now, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. Come on, baby. You enjoy the content. I enjoy giving you this content. All right? Subscribe. Thank you. But going back to this play, it's the uh, basic cover two. That's what the Browns are running right here. And just a quick refresher on what cover two is. Squat corner right here. Squat corner right here. This guy's going to be have that half of the fill. He has that half of the fill. These guys are just distributing underneath, okay? Got you two deep, got your squad corners, all right? So, whenever it's a cover two, look, 
the weak spots where you can hit. We call this the honey hole right here. If you can find that that area between the squat corner and the safety, you could definitely make it. But a lot of things have to go right in terms of how you throw this ball. And what do we mean by that? Man, you got to have touch. Got to have touch, great ball placement, and you got to control this safety right here. Okay? Obviously, like I said, he's bailing out. You see the reroute up front, or at least forcing the inside release. You see the honey hole. This is the spot. Now, why is it such a difficult throw? You got to give enough air that this guy isn't a player in this thing, right? But you also got to make sure it's not too much air where this guy can come down and either knock out this guy, get a uh, interception, PBU, anything. So a lot has to go into this. But just watch my man seven. Takes advantage of number one, this safety. Definitely was a little bit late on the break there. But it's a beautiful throw right there, man. Getting it over the uh, corner. And like I said, making sure that the safety was never a factor in this play. But this is what he has to continue to do. We understand that, yes, if you're asking him to throw the ball 30, 40 yards downfield multiple times, he will struggle with that. His arm is not going to be able to hold up for that for 16 weeks. We saw that also this season, right? At times, the arm looked great, especially early on in the year. But also, the passing attempts were down early in the season. As the attempts continue to increase, the arm started to look less and less like what we were accustomed to seeing from him. Right here, though, if you could just continue to cut that back a little bit, he's making the throws that you need him to make. You have to be able to make this throw <laughs> versus cover two. Otherwise, they're going to run it all day. All right? So you have to be able to make that throw, which he definitely did right there. And he made the right read as well. Because for, for the arm conversation, that's one thing. But you always want to make sure that he hasn't lost his wits. You know, that he's still focusing on what he's focusing on. Seeing the field the way that he's supposed to see the field. And he's definitely doing that. But here it is again from the end zone. We'll slow it down here. Just go watch his eyes, man. Watch how he works. Like I said, he knows where he wants to go. But if he looks right now, that safety is going to be a factor in that play. He holds the safety until late. Then he makes that pass. But like I said, man, this is how it's supposed to be. You might have a guy that has more talent from an arm standpoint, but is he going to do the intangibles like this as well? Hold the safety. Look him over here. Just to keep him from getting over to that half that we already drew, that we already drew up from the wide angle. And then from there, steps into the throw like he's supposed to. It's a beautiful pass right here, man. Right in the window, right in that honey hole. Got to keep it going, right? Keep that going. If they continue to do more of this with the minimized passing attempts, you get them a good running game with them, yeah, I definitely think the Steelers are going to be able to do some really, really positive things this year. So this next thing we're going to talk about right here is obviously Ben versus the Cleveland Browns, still in that wild card matchup, right? But um, we're going to talk about this play. This was a, a 10-yard out by Juju. And it was a couple of things I wanted to point out on this play that really highlight some of the things from Ben and his arm strength and accuracy that are going to be needed as he continues forward next season. So, you know how we do this thing. I'll play it in full speed, and after that, I'll break it down. Right there is Juju lined up in the slot. All right. All right. <clears throat> so, basic coverage standpoint, they're running a cover four defense. All right. So, as we play this thing, you'll get to see exactly where the players are. But he's going to be that window. That's his window. That'd be his deep fourth. That'd be the last fourth. These guys distributed underneath for the zone, right? Four deep, three underneath. Now, for this guy, they're pushing that, right? They'll push the sideline on that. He'll be a player in between those two guys. All right. So with that being the case here, we know that Juju's running a deep out, right? Or a 10-yard out. But the thing that I like is this. This is the barometer for arm strength as it pertains to NFL quarterbacks. You want to see them making that 15 to 20-yard deep out when they're on the backside hash and they got to make that throw across the field to the numbers. Why is it such a difficult throw? Because if this is cover three, this is obviously cover four, so the guy's pushing it. If it's cover three, the guy's still going to be there. So you're not really, you know, protected in either one of those scenarios. Oh, it's easier coverage to make that throw on. Not at all. You got to be able to drive this ball, though, and that's why this is important. You got to drive it to the point where this inside defender right here can't jump it, right? 
Because what you don't what you don't want to happen is him undercutting that, then you'll get the pick six. Think about Buffalo, right? What the Bills were able to do against Ben making that throw, where obviously the circumstances were a little bit different, but you could just see how you can jump those interior. I mean, if you're an interior defender, you can jump those outbreaking routes like that and ultimately create a, a big time play for the defense. So that's why it's important that you have to drive it. And not everybody has the arm strength to get that ball out here. If you put it on the inside, you think about, well, it's crazy. We said this year with uh, the Bills, but even the year prior to that, where the uh, the Bills came down to, uh, to the Steelers, and I think this would have been Duck throwing it to um, Deontay Johnson, and Trey White jumps that pass from the inside out. Outbreaking route like that. It's a tougher throw to make if you're not driving that ball. If you put that ball behind, this corner is in position to make a play. This corner becomes a factor. But because you drive it outside, now it's different. Now this guy can't get there. But the touch element is this. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you drive it too much, then the ball is going out of bounds. It's the, the fine balance of life, right? A <laughs> little bit much, not too much though, right? A little bit less, but not too not, don't Don't go too far now. But right here, you get that right here, man. Beautiful throw. Just once again, like I said, showing him drive this ball. 10, 15 yards outside the numbers. Let me see what your arm looks like. That's the proof in the putting right there. So, as long as he can still make that throw right there, I still feel really confident. And because we know stretching the field, we've highlighted what he's able to do in some of those scenarios. But now we want to see, all right, we know you can make the, we, we know for, for, for certain you can make the short pass. We've seen a ton of that. We've seen the deep pass, but it's cool to see a little bit of the intermediate. And that's what you're getting right here, man. But just really good job right here. Understanding the defense. Throwing that on a rope right there. Stepping into it, man. Beautiful. All right. It is time for the final play of the video of this breakdown of our quarterback, Big Ruffless Burger. And since we've already talked about some of the deep balls, we've talked about intermediate stuff the good and the bad i like to end on a high note because this is the quarterback we talk about this is our future hall of fame quarterback and since he's coming back we're gonna give him one for the good guys so as we always do i'll play it in full speed and after that i'll break it down and this is the touchdown pass that he threw to deontay johnson this would have been in week 15 no excuse me week 16 there we go of the regular season Love to see it, man. You love to see it. But um, just real quick, from a defensive standpoint, they're running a cover one. This uh, safety right here, giving you the two high shell initially, but it ends with man to man there, man to man there, man to man there. This guy's your free. Boom. And then these two guys are on Benny Snow right here. That's all this defense is. And Ben does a good job of recognizing that. And once again, doing what? Holding that safety. Make sure the safety cannot be a player in this play right here. Because once you realize it's cover one, all you got to do is just put it, put the ball where only your guy can get it, right? Whether you want to go jump ball, whether you want to go back shoulder fade, or if you want to lay it out there for Deontay to just run up under it like he's done multiple times now. Either way, once you have that idea in your head, man, you go with it. But you got to keep this guy out of it. And Ben, when we get to the end zone copy, you'll see how he holds the safety with his eyes, stays stays looking straight downfield, and never looks over here until he's ready to pull the trigger. And by then, it's too late. But beautiful ball placement right there, man. Once again, just putting the ball where only his guy can make the play. That's how it needs to be. Good protection up front. <clears throat> with a little bit of time, man. Let the guy cook. Let him cook, right? Not Russ. Seven. But yeah, here we go right here. You'll be able to see this really good from the end zone copy, man. So remember, this safety is going to come down. This is the guy we got to watch right here. So Ben's already recognizing how they're rocking. He's seeing that. It's telling him stuff. But now from here, just watch him. He doesn't look over there right away. Mm -mm. Let's hold you for a little bit. Now we're going. But now it's too late. You've settled. Balls out. Touchdown. Let's get it. But 
once again full speed. Actually, I, we got to do this thing full just. I'm gonna just let this. I'm gonna just let it play like this, and then I'll speak at the end. Either way, I'm excited, man. It's gonna be interesting to see how he uh, how he continues to progress next year and what moves the Steelers make via the draft and free agency to get him some more pieces around him to either protect him or to compliment him in terms of the running game. But like I said, I'm excited. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Shout out to y'all for tuning in and subscribing. And until next time, baby, peace.